tool for all the parties. And, uh, and it has a sort of uh, mutation for a simple software. Now it's, back, it's becoming a sort of toolbox. And from toolbox, now it is becoming not only toolbox, it will be becoming also a sort of uh, manual guide, capacity building. And I think I want really to thank very much the co-chair of TFI, who did an excellent job, and also this famous Beehive, which is technical TFI technical support unit under the leadership of my brother Sandro. And I think, yes, this is really important. And uh, as I said yesterday, we are now living a sort of culmination of many deliverable of this six cycle. The most intense cycle in the history of IPCC. And I think, uh, as I said, all, oh, as well is the excellent achievement is also as a goes to TFI with all the composition, including the Bureau of TFI. All the, the, some of them are here. And also, I want to highlight something which is really important. It is the strong bridge between NFCCC uh, and IPCC. They started to work with us, to interact, but we forced them, forced them and we adopted them to, to work with us, and they cannot push us out. They are, it is like we are, we are becoming their child, so no problem. And child in the, the Muslim uh, approach, because in European, when you are, have 18 years, you can go. In a Muslim, you should stay. You will take care of us till, till the time we are dead. But it's okay. So, <laughs> I, also, also I, I want to say that uh, what is really important is that all the deliverables, all the utilization of this software should be really taken in consideration as a sort of tool that we should improve. It should be sustained. And sustainability of this tool, depending of your remarks, the utilization, and also your feedback. And I am sure from any feedback you are, we will provide, you have a strong a sort of technical commando, which is uh, technical support unit of uh, TFI, as well as the Bureau of TFI, and also the collaboration of NFCCC. Once again, I, want, I don't want to be long. I want really to thank you very much, and also the colleague of TFI I, I knew. I can say that in the coming months, we will have our election, and it is for me a good opportunity an excellent opportunity to express my gratitude to all the members of TFI Bureau, and I hope that they will run for another, another term, because always we cannot change the team who won, who is winning. I hope that they will stay, and I think the actual co-chair and so are really personally from my heart, I really want to thank them for all the effort they provided. I want also to thank Japan for hosting this technical support unit. And from the beginning, they provided excellent assistance. And uh, the only thing they didn't give is they were not given citizenship. I was asking for Japanese citizenship they didn't provide. But, uh, so, but anyway, <laughs> thank you very much. And I think I want to stop here because otherwise when I start speaking, I cannot stop because when I am in family spirit, this is us. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abdel Moksit, IPCC Secretary, for your very kind words, and very happy to be part of the same family, <laughs> for as long as it's needed for the parties. <laughs> good morning, IPCC colleagues and friends, and good morning to all participants, whether in this room or following us online, live. So welcome to this side event dedicated to the latest developments of the IPCC inventory software for national GAG inventories, which is actually jointly organized by the UNFCCC Secretariat and the IPCC TFI. I am Dominique Rove, I am a team leader of the GAG support unit of the Transparency Division from the Secretariat. It's a real pleasure to be here today with colleagues and friends with whom we have worked together for many years already which allowed this incredibly ambitious project to be designed and implemented since 2019. Now the new generation of the IPCC inventory software, which was officially launched at COP27, uh, we are here, here today uh, to give you an update on the latest developments. As you all know, the IPCC inventory software is playing an incredibly important role in the implementation by developing countries of the enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. The software is being updated on a quarterly basis by colleagues from the TSU, and today the IPCC colleagues will share with you the latest developments available in version 2.861. We will also touch upon the interoperability between the IPCC inventory software and the UNFCCC reporting tools, as well as the future training plans on the IPCC inventory software. Please keep your questions for the end of the side event, and we will be happy to provide any clarification required. Thank you. I will now give the floor to uh, the co-chair of the IPCC TFI, Kyoto Tanabe, who doesn't need any introduction, I think. <laughs> Anyway, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kyoto Tanabe, uh, co-chair of the IPCC Task Force on National Greenhouse Gas Inventories. And first of all, I would like to uh, welcome uh, all of you um, on behalf of uh, uh, my fellow co-chair, Eduardo Carbo Buendia, who is unfortunately uh, absent today. Um, <clears throat> The IPCC inventory software was uh, um, uh, born uh, more than 10 years ago. And at that time, it was a very simple um, software uh, which enabled uh, inventory compilers to use only tier one approach uh, for their inventory preparation. But over 10 years, uh, a lot of uh, uh, tremendous efforts have been made to uh, sort of uh, improve the software, uh, particularly during uh, recent uh, couple of years, uh, not only technical support unit members, but also uh, a lot of uh, external experts uh, have been cooperating uh, in this uh, sort of a polishing, re re refinement of the IPCC inventory software. And now uh, it has evolved, it ha it, it's being evolving into a very central uh, key tool for uh, implementation of uh, uh, enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. And uh, we are very happy to show you the latest uh, development of the IPCC inventory software at this side event. This, uh, this software is still on the way uh, of evolution to, to, to further a uh, useful tool. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, the latest development uh, will be a, um, very interesting to you all. So uh, let me thank you again for participating this, uh, in this uh, side event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kyoto. And uh, once again, I want to, to underline the very fruitful and continuous cooperation uh, between the two organizations in working together to deliver this key tool aimed to support developing countries for the implementation of a crucial part of the ETF under the Paris Agreement. So thank you again for uh, your support uh, over the years. I will now give the floor to Mr. Pavel Shermanov from TSU, who will give us a presentation on the main features of version 2.861 of the IPCC inventory software. Pavel? Yes. Hello to everybody. I will give a brief introduction to the IPCC inventory software. Some of you may know it, some of you don't know it. So as Kyoto mentioned, uh, IPCC inventory software was produced in 2012. 
and initially it was designed uh, to be a simple tool implementing only tier one methods uh, from 2006 IPCC guidelines. So the latest version that we're trying to speak about today, it's a version 2861, and it has been released today. We opened the web page, website today, so you can go to our website and download this uh, new version of the software. So this new version implements the following features. So first of all, all methodological tiers 1, 2, and 3, and all approaches according to 2006 IPCC guidelines, wetland supplements, and some elements of 2000 refinement. We put uh, wetland supplement and refinement in different colors in the software because wetland supplement are encouraged, is used to be uh, by parties, and 2019 refinement on a voluntary basis. And uh, this new version presents interoperability functionality with the uh, UNFCCC CCRT tool uh, for energy sector. Again, uh, what is additional and uh, also to, to show the main features of this version, it allows subnational level of reporting, uh, for example, uh, state or provinces or even uh, down to facilities level. And it uh, helps to check uh, specific activities or regions. So it also allowed to use for each category to use either a single methodological tier or mix of tiers, uh, as I mentioned, one or two or three. And uh, allows in each equation's input user specific values for emission factors and parameters. It allows de developing uh, inventory simultaneously for different categories and, and sectors. Also, the last version implements the IR5 GWP values, and also, I mean, we have all uh, uh, assessment reports, second assessment, third, fourth assessment report, and now we have a fifth assessment report values, but users also may enter any other user-specific metric to be applied into the software. And it stores information as a set with a single database. So just to show you a bit of architecture, so of course the main field of work, it's a worksheet for data entry, when the users enter in the data and start to use uh, uh, and to estima do estimations. Then a lot of administration functions like country, users, and years. Uh, the software contains default uh, data from 2006 IPCC guidelines. We have five managers now where uh, the data, activity data, need to be uh, input in the first. Uh, uh, and then uh, the data will go to the worksheets and for data entry. Uncertainty analysis, key category analysis, and reference method, uh, data import and export functions, and data archive. So this is a, a Microsoft Access uh, product and uh, the database file is a CCDB file. So this file can be stored somewhere. So this is a sort of about architecture of this version. And just to show you a very quickly example of a worksheet, this is a main uh, field of work here. So this is a category tree. Uh, users need to select a specific category, then to define which uh, tier to use, tier one or tier two or tier three. Then subdivisions, it's again, it could be a state, a province, facility, a city, uh, anything that can be here. And uh, then uh, default or user sp uh, specified process or technologies. So here technology can be manually entered. For example, maybe in a country X, there is a very specific technology. They can write down here that technology and uh, provide uh, specific parameters uh, according to this technology, and the software will calculate emissions. So very, very simple, very user-friendly. Uh, about details, about other features we will have in the subsequent presentations, I will talk about ongoing work and some general matters. So we are working uh, now on, on direct CO2 emissions and direct nitrous oxide emissions. Interoperability with UNF Triple C uh, reporting tool. Of course, a lot of works on notation keys, time series export, import, and supporting tools. This is our uh, work plan. 
Also, we understand that users, you, you need a support, a guidebook, how to use it step-by-step -step analysis, which will be helpful very, very much. So we are drafting this Facebook, and there are many advances that energy sector in a much advanced shape in the drafting. Other sectors are catching up. And uh, uh, software users must be familiar with IPCC methodologies in the first place. And, uh, of course, they need to download the uh, help uh, uh, manual from the software or software manual before going through the guidebook. And uh, we would like always to say that the guidebook does not replace the guidelines. So you need to know the guidelines, you need what kind of activity data uh, you need to have. And then, of course, software is a simple tool to, to estimate emissions. So just an example how we do it step by step, explaining that in the fuel manager you need to enter uh, uh, specific fuels or you can select them from, from the default fuels. Then on a fuel consumption data could be differentiation by technologies types, by uh, tiers. Then the entering amount of activity data, emission factors, and then will be results. So this is just a scheme, but will be a lot of text explanations in the, in the guidebook. And the download, as I said, we opened the, the web page now. The version is 2.8.6.1 now, but there are two installation packages, 32-bit and 64-bit. Actually, I didn't know which computer I have, so I asked our uh, IT officer what kind of uh, installation package I need to install. But we provide you explanation for decision tree, how to install it in, in which configurations. And then please follow instructions how to log in and, and, and so on. Maybe I can briefly mention that it's a, if you want to select a password, it's your password. We don't know anything about the password, so please remember the password. And what kind of support we, we, we do? Of course, we have a user manual uh, uh, in the software. We have a de help desk. You can send always us emails. We started to work with a pool of voluntary testers that the test the software and send the feedback to us. So please, if you want to be this volunteer tester, please send us an email and we would uh, uh, share more information about software with you. You can enter your national data in this software, check if w what's, what's good or not, and then we can improve maybe something in the future. We always do cooperation with UNFCCC in different training workshops as research persons. We provide an advice in, in some trainings and explanation how the software works. And also we have our IPCC annual meetings on the software feedback. So every year IPCC, TFI have a meeting receiving feedbacks on our, on our products. So again, you can participate maybe in the future in particular events if you, if you have some experience and knowledge of using our software. But let me say one important thing that at the end of July, as Abdullah mentioned, will be election. So all that is uh, till end of July, then will be a new bureau and they will decide on the particular work plan after that. So thank you very much for your attention. Th thank you very much, Pavel, for this update. And we are right on time, so that's perfect. That's not always the case. So we'll now give the floor to Mr. Sandro Federici, yes. head of the TFI so, TSU, who will give us a presentation on the land representation in the AFOLU sector. Yeah, okay. As Pavel said, uh, we are working on a guidebook uh, for the user. The guidebook is a, is a composition of various pieces. One, the first piece that we are going to publish, actually is already online, is about the land representation for the, the AFOLU sector, for the land subsector, let's say. Why this has been prioritized? Because this is the, the, the activity that is more time consuming and resource needs than, than others in the inventory. And we understand that without this guide, it's difficult to use the, 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 the software. The, guide, the land representation is at the bottom of, uh, of the entire uh, estimates for greenhouse gas emissions and removal from land. So this is the first step to do. The, I want to stress that this is just the first iteration because like, as the software keeps uh, under a continuous process of, of improvement, 
Also, the guidebook will be kept under a continuous process of, imp of improvement. This is the first iteration. There is a just a description of the functionalities. We, we didn't yet uh, add the step-by-step -step guide in case you want to build a lender representation. But yeah, you have all the elements to understand what the software does to ensure a consistent lender representation. To, towards on a, the lender representation, as I said, is at the bottom of the estimates in the land sector. There are two phases. You need to, you need to classify the land, eh? and then you need to identify on your territory the units of land, the, the, that portion of land, those areas of land that have the same characteristic. These characteristics are biophysical, climate, soil, vegetation type, but also uh, socio-economical, the land use, the, the land management. And then uh, the software is capable uh, to stratify your country in, uh, according with your uh, variables, and then to track uh, the unit of land across the entire uh, time series inventory. Uh, we always need to remember that inventory is not a one-year uh, exercise, it's a time series always. So it's very important to keep the consistency across the time series. So indeed, for uh, if you go in the, in the IPCC guidance, it's a consistent land representation. That is the, 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 the point uh, of, uh, to, to be always um, taken into account. Because if you have an inconsistency, then it's biased, you have a bias. And then your estimates are biased because a biased. Okay, um, this is about bias, but I may skip this one. First step uh, to deal with the with the land use classification that the software as the land use manager is called is the first step. You need to populate in the manager all your land types, starting from the land use categories that are already there, the six pieces in land use categories. We already disaggregate the land use categories in subcategories, manager forest land, manager forest land, annual cropland, perennial crop. This means, uh, be, be aware that to have a manager forest land or manager forest land means that the IPCC software apply different methods because it depends on the methodologies, uh, depending on the land use uh, the land use categories, the software apply the IPCC methodologies, which, uh, which differ, of course. Then uh, within uh, each of the land use uh, subcategory, you populate your subdivisions. Now I show you one example. Uh, there is no limit uh, to the number of subdivisions. Of course, more subdivision, uh, more complex uh, is the system to manage. It's just about uh, your, your uh, capacity of manage uh, the, the complexity of the land representation. Uh, the IPCC inventory soft, the land use manager apply the IPCC climate and soil stratification, but you may input uh, your own uh, country specific climate and soil stratification. And uh, of course, it ensures, uh, in this way, it ensures consistency in the land subdivisions across the entire inventory. Let me show you an example. This is uh, uh, a plantation. So you have uh, information, uh, you add no, a new subdivision in the software. Then you input information that are uh, on the biophysical element, the soil, the climate, and then the soil status. And then because this is a forest, you have also the ecological zone, the vegetation zone of that. And you may, for each of these parameters, you may uh, use the IPCC default or you go for your uh, country specific. And then you populate uh, some of the carbon uh, uh, specific parameters that are needed uh, to the software to, to estimate uh, the, um, the emissions and removals. Blue means that those are needed at tier two. Black is tier one. Uh, but of course, uh, some of the ele elements of tier one are also applied to tier two. Okay, this is tier two parameter. Okay, the land representation manager, the second element is the land represent representation manager. This is the the tool where you put all the area of unit of land, all the other information. You may disaggregate your country in a, an infinite number of regions, unlimited number of regions. For each region, you may choose a different land representation approach. Of course, regions, the area of region is fixed, you cannot move the area from one region to the other one. You, you, you create some subunit of the, of the inventory that stay for the entire time series of the inventory in order to ensure uh, consistency. 
Now I show you the three tabs. The first tab is the region. Here you populate how many regions. In this example, I, I put uh, four regions. Uh, each region, you see, I have uh, one approach, one region, uh, two approach, two regions, and one approach, three regions. The software automatically calculates that some text on the area discrepancy. You see, because it's green, 4,000 means that the software, the, 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 the area input is consistent with the total area of the country that you have input. Uh, okay, here is about the information. The second tab, which is the most important, where you put all the units of land, is the land representation table. You have, by default, all the land uses here, and then you go down, 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 and you input information. You start from the current land use subcategory, category, subcategory, subdivision. In this case, it's a settlement urban. Then you, you also input information on the previous subdivision. In this case, it was it's still, uh, the previous is the same as the current. It's in blue because it means that this is not in conversion, this land. But you see, the software also record all the history across the, the activity time series that that unit of land had. So it was a, a grassland, then a cropland, and then became a forest plantation. And you have the information about the year where this happened. Uh, okay, I should have done this. Then uh, also very important, here you input for each unit of land, you select which methodology to estimate carbon stock change, you want to apply. The methodology is, of course, a PCC has two methods, gain and loss, stock difference. By default, this is what the, the software applied, the gain and loss, which is the IPCC default methodologies. But you may change for one pool, for all the pool, it's up to you. You may have a mix to, to the stock difference. There are other functionality, but is, I mean, we don't have time for everything. Um, what is very important that is the information that you input in the land representation manager. This is a, a land represent, representation tab filled. You see you have all the unit of lands. Each row is a unit of land. This these, uh, these unit of land are then transferred by the software in the worksheets where you do the carbon calculation. You see those are the units of land. I'm sorry, it's a little bit small, but if you download the presentation, then you see it better. And then here you input any additional information that you need to input in the software to, have the, to allow the software to calculate. The software, the last column, the green one, produces the estimate of carbon stock changes from that land. Finally, for approach two and approach three only, of course, the software provides you this table, which is an annual is a land transition matrix. Is a, it's very important because it's requested by DC, DCRT, for instance. And, uh, and that's it. So please download the guide. This is the address where you may download it. Provide us your feedback. The next iteration, we will, with, hopefully, we will release next, next month. We will also include a step-by-step -step description on how to input the data for a lender representation into the, the software. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sandro, for this uh, very useful update on the land sector. I will now give the floor to Ms. Lisa Anne, consultant to the TSU, who will give us a presentation on the very much needed interoperability between the UNFCC reporting tools and the IPCC inventory software. Thanks, Dominique, and hi, everyone. Um, we wanted to provide an update on what we have been doing the past year on the interoperability between the, the, the IPCC software and the UNFCCC electronic reporting tool that they are working on. Um, we made a lot of progress in the last year. I'll, I'll just go quickly there, but want to emphasize where we are now. Um, the version that was just released, the 2.861, does have the elements um, so that you can see how the interoperability um, can work with the IPCC inventory software. Um, as you all know, the first BTRs will be due um, by December, um, end of December 2024. So the MPGs talk about what has to be done. Uh, the decision 5 CMA 3 in Glasgow talks about the how, and there are the reporting tables for in inventory um, and the UNFCCC will be developing an electronic reporting tool software to help you actually report that information. 
Um, that decision also requested the UNFCCC to work with the IPCC on interoperability between these two pieces of software. Um, as Abdullah said, it's a strong bridge that has existed over the, the past and particularly in the past year on this project. Um, we talked about this last year, interoperability, what it is is the ability of the softwares in one way or another to talk. And how we have been working on this is, um, you know, what, what Sandra was talking about with the land representation tool. Countries can do their inventory in the IPCC inventory software. Um, it would generate a file that could then be input and imported into the, into the UNFCCC electronic reporting tool. So the IPCC software becomes an integral part of the whole institutional arrangements of a, of a country. Um, it's very helpful because it can help you do the inventory in accordance with the guidelines, reduce error. Um, it, 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 serves, it can serve as an archive. I think Pavel was, was talking about that of the inventory. So it really becomes a central component, all in all, reducing the burden to countries. So what interoperability is, is you have the inventory software worksheets, number one and two above. You can input the calculations, um, estimate the emissions. What we have been doing is for every tier, every gas, every category, finding where in the, in the CRT tables agreed by parties, where do these emissions or these activity data go? Um, this effort has required strong coordination with the, with the UNFCCC. What that resulted in is that for every um, common reporting table agreed by parties, we then have a mapping to show um, how every tier, every gas, <laughs> every category then can map into the, into the UNFCCC um, reporting software. We will do this for activity data and for emissions. Um, the, the implied emission factors are, will be calculated on the uh, CRT side. Um, in addition, we have been working at ways to include um, some additional information that, that's required by the IPCC guidelines, but is also in the, the CRT. Um, things like documentation boxes, providing explanations, um, clarifications, there's, there's space to do all of this, notation keys, and we can show you. Um, what we wanted to emphasize here really is what you can see, and, and again, you can download the software and it would be really great to, to, to to get some feedback. Um, we're here if you want to, to do it one by one. We can, after the session in our, in our side event, we can, we can work through it. But the user would calculate the uh, inventory in the IPCC inventory software. So that looks very similar to what you've seen. There are some updates in the presentation, but it looks very, very similar. Um, key is that up at the top, there's an export import function, and that's a, a CRT data interface. Um, and there, what you can do is you can create the data set that you then want to export to the, to the common reporting tables. You identify the, the, the name of that data set, the years that you want to export to the UNFCCC, um, and then it will ask you a question, do you want to feed your worksheet data in? And you say, yes. And then what happens is you have a, a visualization. Here is an example of the energy sector. Um, one of the tables that were agreed by parties, um, but you can do it for every sector, right now just energy, but for every sector, for every year. Um, up at the top, there's a bar, you have uh, the table one and all through all tables in the energy sector. And what is visualized here is the output of the mapping. So you can see where your emissions estimates are, your activity data. Um, at the bottom, there's the footnotes that are available in the CRT. There's a place to put documentation. Um, there's some notes for the inventory user to, to help um, understand what, how to present the information. Um, and then you can, you can click and you can check and you can edit. So the editing function. Um, so here, this is again the example from the energy table. If you want to provide a, a comment on one of the cells, you can, you can click on the cell and you can provide a comment that could then transfer to the, the common reporting tables. Um, you may want to explain a notation key. For example, in the CRT, you have to explain not estimated or included elsewhere, so, or, and flexibility. Um, so there's a pop-up box that will come, on, uh, come up and you can insert the relevant information that will then transfer to the proper space in the, um, in the CRT. These columns on the right, um, the CRT requires countries to put information in on the method and the emission factor used for, for every category. And so here's, uh, this is how we have implemented that in the inventory, IPCC inventory software. 
And I just wanted to illustrate something because it looks like a lot of data that you have to enter. But in fact, you can make these edits for, if it's going to work, yeah, for one cell or multiple cells at a time. So what you would do is select all of the, the cells that you want to edit, and then you can right click on it and edit it. And a pop-up box will come up and says, what do you want to do in all of these cells? And here it's, I want to provide, I want to, to name that this is a country specific emission factor. And then for all of these cells, I want to say what kind of method has been used. And so then you can select it for, for multiple cells and then it would provide it in the, in the CRT, in the visualization tool. Um, so this is a way to enhance user friendliness um, and prepare for the, for the CRT submission. Um, we've also have a way of uh, working with and addressing confidentiality. We know that that's an, that's an issue. Um, just like with the other edit functions, if there is a value in a cell, um, you can click on the cell and, and, and designate that you would like to make this confidential. Um, the value will appear here in the visualization table within the IPCC software, um, but it would not transfer. Um, it would not be in the JSON file that's generated for transfer to the UNFCCC. Um, all of this is a visualization. If during the course of QC you find that there's an error, you can go back into the underlying worksheets, um, make the necessary edits, and then there's a function here to refresh values. And so then all the, the new information will, will pop up. Um, the, the last step um, from the IPCC inventory software side is the ability to generate the JSON file. That's the file format that will be used um, that can then be imported by the UNFCCC electronic reporting tool. Um, you would, that import would happen, and then you may want to do checks for quality control on the UNFCCC side, but that's how the file will be generated by the, by the IPCC software. Um, like with the land representation, we have prepared a quick start guide um, to, to help you get ready. Um, this is also available uh, on, the, on the download site that Pavel mentioned. Um, yeah, please, yeah, take, take a look at it. I know it's hard to see on these presentations, um, but stop by and we're, we're happy to help. Um, so the road ahead, um, we are expecting multiple releases between now and COP28, um, uh, subject to the same uh, comments that, that Pavel made about the, the change of the Bureau in, in July. Um, but, but multiple releases are expected. The best way to prepare is to really to get in there and start playing with it and asking questions and, and working through it. And I, I note here the same, the same comments about the, the next updates. Um, final version according to decision 5CMA3 is June 2024. And so that's, that's all of our goals. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lisa, for this uh, very useful update on this quite complex topic. We will now have two presentations uh, on the supporting tools for the use of the IPCC inventory software. And for the first one, I uh, will give the floor to Suren, who will give us a presentation on the IPCC emission factor database, a tool supporting the implementation of the IPCC inventory software. Suren? Uh, Thank you, Dominic, and hello to everyone. So IPCC Emission Factor Database, FTP, uh, was launched in 2002. And then database contains IPCC default uh, values from the IPCC guidelines and the data from peer review with journal papers and data from other sources, uh, such as, as a national reports, including national inventory reports, etc. So. Uh, Database also serves as a communication platform for experts, inventory experts and researchers uh, to share data and information that can be used for estimation of national greenhouse gas emissions and removals. So uh, FDB is recognized by parties uh, to the UNFCCC as a useful resource for inventory compilers. For example, it was reported to in the uh, reporting guidelines uh, for national greenhouse gas inventories from uh, Annex 1 parties in uh, decision uh, 24 CP19. Uh, FDB is also uh, an important resource for development of IPCC guidelines. It is one of the sources 
uh, of data information uh, for consideration of the authors in developing IPCC guidelines. So, um, FDB is, uh, uh, as uh, the Dominic mentioned, uh, is one of the supporting tools for uh, estimation of national greenhouse gas em uh, emissions and removals. So, uh, it is not subject to formal IPCC review process. It is uh, one of the big difference uh, the, between the supporting tools, IPCC supporting tools and IPCC methodology reports. As we know, IPCC methodology reports, uh, uh, the guidelines uh, uh, in uh, development of the guidelines, uh, draft reports undergo multi-stage review process, but, but uh, supporting tools are not subject to the uh, review process. So, uh, FTB is uh, populated, uh, has been populated through submissions from in inventory experts, researchers, and the data collection activities. Uh, we organize expert meetings annually to collect data for the FTB. We also conduct literature search to identify uh, useful data and data sources. So it is open to any data proposals, and uh, uh, all data proposals submitted to the FTB uh, are considered by the editorial board. Uh, the edit in consideration of data proposals, editorial board will look at the robustness, applicability, and documentation of data. So uh, the uh, main goal, aim, of the uh, consideration of data proposal is not to undertake a full scientific assessment of data sources and data, but to collect data useful to users. So we organize uh, the editorial board meetings annually, where editorial board uh, considers data proposals and discuss how to improve, enhance the database. And uh, most re recently in May, we uh, organized 21st meeting of the editorial board in, uh, uh, in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, this slide shows how we populate the AFTB. So next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we organize expert meetings to collect data for the FTB, so-called data meetings annually. So uh, this year, uh, the 21st data meeting uh, was held in parallel with 21st editorial board meeting in Christchurch, New Zealand in May. So uh, 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 total 2,445 data were accepted by the editorial board at these uh, meetings, uh, the, uh, the 21st editorial board meeting and 21st data meeting in May this year. So FTB has two applications, web application and offline application. Offline application uh, 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 the, uh, available for download at our website. It works on Windows and Mac and Linux platforms. Uh, FTB has uh, the several search functions and uh, please um, search functions and uh, uh, for example for a basic search users need to uh, specify gas uh, type of uh, parameters etc and uh, can see status of search and also can export uh, the search results uh, in Excel file and database also has the uh, the um, uh, filter uh, function uh, to narrow down search results. Details of data can be seen by clicking detail button. So this is example of the, uh, uh, ex uh, the, the uh, search uh, result export uh, Excel file. Each data in FTB uh, has its own ID and then uh, the, this slide uh, shows uh, the background information accompanied by uh, accompanied each data in the FTB. Also can be exported as an Excel or Word file. So uh, FTB uh, regularly updated with new data and we will release this year uh, new upgraded version of the FTB. The upgraded version of the FTB uh, contains uh, the categories of the 2019 refinement and also it has enhanced uh, search filter functions and then it will also able to show data statistics tables. 
So uh, the, the, this uh, uh, new additional the uh, new additional criteria added for uh, search filter function. So next slide. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, database also uh, can show the data statistics in FTB. And then uh, we also added the drop down list for uh, the source of uh, data category. And then it also helps uh, the uh, users to uh, the search and the filter uh, the data, search data, the according to the data sources. Next, okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ryan, for this update. Uh, for the second presentation on reporting tools, uh, supporting tools, sorry, we will have a recorded presentation from Ms. Olya Glade from the Greenhouse Gas Management Institute on another on another very important tool designed to facilitate the implementation of the implementation of the IPC software, which is the sectoral activity data for GAG emissions, in short, SAGE as acronym, which is a data collection and management tool that will really facilitate uh, the use of the IPC software. Activity data for greenhouse gas emissions calculation. Collecting and documenting activity data is a complicated task. We need to know a lot about the data to make it work for us. Some big concerns for inventory compilers include sourcing, processing, and recording not just activity data but also metadata and specific. Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Olya Glade and I'm a director for MRE Systems at the Greenhouse Gas Management Institute. It is a pleasure to introduce today the software tool called SAGE, which stands for Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Olya Glade, and I'm a director for MRE Systems at the Greenhouse Gas Management Institute. It is a pleasure to introduce today the software tool called SAGE, which stands for Sectoral Activity Data for Greenhouse Gas Emissions Calculation. Collecting and documenting activity data is a complicated task. We need to know a lot about the data to make it work for us. Some big concerns for inventory compilers include sourcing, processing, and recording not just activity data, but also metadata and specific parameters, data review and approval process, data gaps, using the activity data beyond GHD inventories, for example, calculating performance indicators for NDC tracking. Stage software has been created by the team led by the GHD mine, supported by UNFCCC, and it is very helpful in resolving the problems I just mentioned. SAGE is a greenhouse gas inventory data collection tool to support national climate MRE systems, especially in developing countries, for robust data collection, intelligent processing, and storage. SAGE is fully compatible with the 2006 IPCC guidelines for national greenhouse gas inventories, and it was developed to support governments in collecting activity data to ultimately meet reporting requirements under the ETF and the Paris Agreement. SAGE is focused on activity data. It provides the opportunity to enter and track activity data, recalculate units, set uncertainty following 2006 IPCC logic, apply sector-specific features, find and fill data gaps, adjust menus to national circumstances, perform data analysis, calculate indicators, support data review and approval process. Currently, SAGE includes sectoral blocks for the energy, IPPU, and the base sectors. We are also planning to include the agriculture sector by 2024. 
here are just a few examples of the implemented sector specific features. Energy sector. Enter the data for the reference approach and calculate the apparent fuel consumption. Sectoral approach. Top down or bottom up data entry. IPPU sector. Blend calculator for fluorinated gases. Calculating banks. For the waste sector. FOD model. Data entry by bulk and by the composition. For wastewater. TOW calculation is introduced for both industrial and domestic wastewater. In the end, SAGE forms data outputs that are ready to be inserted in the equation for emissions estimates in line with the 2006 IPCC guidelines, but the emission estimates themselves are out of scope for this tool. SAGE's system architecture has four layers. The Linux operating system, the Apache HTTP server, the MySQL relational database, and the PHP scripting layer. For calculations, Sage uses business logic described in the 2006 IPCC guidelines, basic material science and engineering data, and statistical formula. Sage is a web based tool that can be run on server of your choice. It is platform independent. It can be accessed by multiple users simultaneously. It accepts data entries through the web form from Excel files for time series and by modifying data collections previously created in Sage and approved for publication in external use. Working with Sage includes the following sequence of steps. First, create a collection or a placeholder for your data and metadata. Then, enter or load the data. Next, compare with the previous collections if you have them. Find and fill the data gaps, analyze this time series, and go for the review process and publication. It is important to know that Sage and IPCC tools are different, but they are complementary to each other. It is a good idea to use both tools for producing GHD inventories. Specifically, Sage is used for storing and processing activity data and metadata so that it could be entered in the IPCC equations. It also performs activity data analysis and fills the data gaps. On the other hand, the IPCC software is for calculating emissions from the processed activity data, processing emissions and creating reports. Sage supports the IPCC tool by providing the appropriately processed activity data as required by the IPCC tool in the correct form and units. It is planned to build an XML bridge between the Sage and the IPCC tool to provide for the automatic activity data upload. And both tools are distributed free of charge. Thank you. And here is a glimpse of the data entry form in Sage that is just waiting for you to fill it in. Thank you, Olya, in absentia. <laughs> now, this is a very useful tool, actually, that we have been supporting the development of for, for the last three years. And what she didn't mention is that uh, currently, uh, the team is developing the, the tool for the agriculture sector, uh, so that will be ready and, uh, for release the complete tool, um, let's say spring or beginning of second quarter next year. So that's uh, right on time for, for the BTRs and all the process. So thank you very much. And then Boris, just stay there and just upload my presentation, please. <laughs> Uh, this is the last presentation, then you will have a chance to, to ask questions, so you can move, flip the slide, it's good. Yeah, next one. Next one, yeah, okay. So, um, so like, like I said, I'm leading the, the GAG support unit, and uh, what my unit is doing is actually heavily based on the link to IPCC guidelines and, and tools and software, etc. So we have a strong cooperation that we've been cooperating for many years already. But uh, what we do in our team is uh, centered around the sustainable national GAG inventory management system, the building, setting up, and all what goes with it, the development of knowledge, uh, tools and, and, and training materials, as well as data management and, and quality. So in doing this, we, we have come across a lot of cross-cutting issues, like uh, reporting requirements for MRV uh, and also the ETF implementation. So the 2006 guidelines are very prominent, as well as some other uh, guidelines which are only voluntary. Uh, next slide, please. And if you can... Uh, move on and display all the, the activities that we are doing, all of them, please. 
So we, we mostly uh, deliver trainings through thematic workshop, whether it's uncertainty, data collection, management, etc. But uh, the key topic for, um, for this meeting is the regional workshops that we used to organize since 2016 with the IPCC colleagues. It's a five-day regional workshop that is designed on building national inventory management system and also the implementation of the 2006 IPCC guidelines, of course, including the IPCC software. In doing so, we collaborate heavily with the IPCC team, the FAO, and also the US EPA for the uh, national inventory management system part. So if you can display everything, Boris, now, until the end of the slide. So we also deliver um, activities in country through quality assurances made upon request by countries. It covers the inventory management system, but also the latest estimate, hopefully before submission. Uh, and we have also launched uh, a few months ago uh, similar activities, quality assurance for energy statistics and their management system. We also have learning and certification program that we do uh, using a GGMI system. And we are currently uh, about to finish the fourth cohort of training on this and certification of experts that can then be enrolled in the roster of experts of the convention and take other useful training. Uh, we develop use user manuals, tools, and platforms like AFOLU and also a GAG help desk that is very important and uh, I encourage everybody to, to have a look. Next slide. So the main topic for, for this meeting is the regional workshops on building sustainable GAG inventory management systems and also applying the 2006 guidelines, including, of course, of course the inventory software. So this is design. This is very important activity that we we implement it in coordination with the IPCC. Uh, it's a five-day regional workshop. Uh, we design three regions, uh, Africa, Asia Pacific, and Eastern Europe are learned together, and Latin America and the Caribbean. So we focus on how to establish or strengthen national institutional arrangements uh, for the implementation of the MPGs and also for the enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. We focus on how to effectively implement the 2006 IPCC guidelines in collaboration with the IPCC task force for four full days on this topic. And then we focus on hands-on training and latest version of the IPCC software. So that's uh, something that uh, we have been doing uh, uh, very successfully for the past uh, seven years now. And I think it, we, our aim is to have it, uh, yeah, next slide, to have it continued uh, Actually, we would have liked to have this happen this year. Unfortunately, these regional workshops for the three regions um, did not take place this year, and uh, we unfortunately cannot implement them because uh, there's not uh, enough uh, supplementary resources for that. Actually, not at all. So, but we stand ready uh, once uh, we have the funding in place. Yeah, uh, and then last one, please click one. More. Okay. So once we have the the funding available and also we can conclude the MOUs with the countries. We have already a set of host countries who has volunteered for, for the workshop, so we can make this happen within six to seven months. It's not a problem. The machine is really well oiled. And <laughs> we can deliver very quickly. Uh, but the missing bit and obstacles is that there's no supplementary funding available. So uh, we'd love to have these regional trainings with the <laughs> TSU colleagues, uh, and especially uh, using and implementing the new uh, software, which is very key for, for the ETF implementation. So we have estimated the budget uh, for the three workshops per year at uh, 650,000 euros. So that's uh, the sad message I unfortunately have to deliver here because we worked so hard for many years to make this project happen. And now we cannot simply train countries to, to use it on time for, for the first bit here. Anyway, if there's any donor country or donor who is in the room, I just have fresh printed business cards that I received yesterday. I'm happy to hand over a few of them. So that's it. That was the key message for me. Thank you very much. And by the way, we are exactly on time, which is like a <laughs> close to a miracle. <laughs> so now will be your chance to, to ask questions, make comments, and ask us, uh, especially the IPCC colleagues, any type of question you want. Please. Yes, please, Sandro. 
Housekeeping communication. Uh, for the participants, uh, we have a conference bag to, di to distribute, so but you need to facilitate yourself there. Uh, Erico will, uh, will support the distribution. Thank you. At the end of this uh, me meeting. Thank you, Sandro. So, yeah. I have a question already in front. Oh, Hello. please, let, let's start. Hello, thank you very much for the uh, nice session, uh, giving very fruitful information. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, share the colleagues uh, what Dominic presented the last uh, presentation, uh, the process that is uh, giving the quality assurance check for the countries when developing countries where we are moving to the uh, BTR process. Uh, that is a really, really handful, uh, helpful process because the report that is released under this pro after this process is sort of the guidance for the parties to immediately address the most important gaps that they have uh, already identified. I have two questions, so I don't want to uh, take too much time. The first question is related to the uh, GAG inventory tool. Uh, I'm interested in uh, if it is uh, possible, uh, whatever the data will be uh, inputted by the party for estimation, DHG emissions can be kept uh, because you are permanently updating the versions. So how it can be kept uh, for the future. And uh, for for case of Georgia, we are we would like to use this tool as a part of the, our archiving system. So could you give us some kind of feedback on that? And second question is about the uh, emission factor database. Uh, in Georgia, we have developed some country-specific emission factors. How can we communicate with you to reflect it in the database? Thank you very much. Uh, about the upgrade, yes, the software automatically upgrades the, the database made with previous versions. Generally, there is no any data loss. It may happen only in case there is a critical up update. This happened twice, one for the lender representation because the previous software didn't have it, so data need to be entered again. And for, uh, also in this case happened for the waste model because uh, the waste model provide, uh, IPCC provide uh, a, a, a total uh, for the entire waste uh, disposal size, while the CRT require uh, a disaggregation in a type of waste and in, in type of waste disposal size. So in that case, the user had to, to input again the data. But generally, the software doesn't lose any data because there is a continuous upgrade of the new version of the software of the old databases. For the second question, maybe uh, Suren uh, wish to. Okay, uh, 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 thank you very much. Yes, uh, you can contact uh, the us with, uh, uh, with your data. Uh, the, uh, we have uh, the link to the FTB uh, presentation, and then uh, the click in that link, and then you will see technical support unit to contact. And then uh, click in technical support unit, yeah, yeah, the, we receive your email. Thank you very much. Okay. So perhaps I will stand up for people to see me and stay here because it's better. If not, they will just hear back. So uh, I'm Marcel Bernou from FAOs. Um, I have a question. So first a remark. So I fully agree with you that interoperability, this is a key element. But I would argue that interoperability, we need to find a new word first. Uh, but it's not only IPCC and UNFCC. Uh, we have seen uh, 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 another software also. So th th that was a, a question for, for, for FAO side, we are already trying to work with, we are trying and we are working with you, developing plugins for the IPCC software. I have a colleague here, uh, some of you might know him, Danilo, so you can contact him and collect her. So we are trying to, on the land representation, to, to help on the matrix. But beside that aspect, is not just those kind of tools can help and support besides just the reporting aspect. You mentioned the uh, BTR that are coming. In the BTR, you have mitigation action. On mitigation, you can 
do it trying to compare two scenarios. So let's say a business as usual or a reporting from countries on what you have in your NDC, for instance. So I would ask the secretary if you have planned to use also those tools to do some kind of mitigation calculation that would be compliant with IPCC for sure, but also with the transparency uh, requirement. So this is my, my first question. Uh, we have some tools from our side working on mitigation, so we are ready to engage with you. We are limited to the AFLU sector for sure, we are just FAO. And my other question is about the format. Because for that, you need some several principles. So having a common format, when you want tools to communicate, that format should be, let's say, uh, public, available, uh, free also. So this is some di different question that uh, I hope the Secretariat on IPCC will, will answer. Thanks so much. Uh, so the, the software has capacity to estimate the emissions and removal according to the different scenarios. You, pa you populate two databases and the two databases give you the information. But the software doesn't calculate the mitigation, so it doesn't do the comparison between the two databases. This should be done uh, by another tool, maybe FAO wish to do, would be very nice to do this tool that read the multiple database and may do the comparison and then estimate the, the mitigation. About the second question, uh, interoperability. We have the plan, uh, also the UNFCC, I expect, uh, to publish uh, all the information about the interoperability, including uh, the format of the export file, all the mapping that Lisa shown, Every be, everything will be published. But not now, probably, at, I mean, the plan I understand is at the end of the work, of, 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 the, of the completion of the interoperability work. Yes, for sure. All right, thank you. Uh, I hate to, <laughs> to answer in the name of somebody who's not in the room, but it's for GAGMI. But uh, what I know is that uh, their tool, anyway, is, is and will be free and is fully developed uh, in coordination with the, the IPCC team. So it, they, they work together. So that there's no competition, it, they just do not do the same thing. It's because uh, archiving, documentation, tagging of data is becoming more and more important, tracking data o o over time. So that's what the tool is essentially doing because uh, most European countries, and we have done it in several quality assurances, it simply does not exist. So this is also helping building archiving system and, and all this. Yeah. Still on interoperability, it's good to do another example. A FAO, there is here the former responsible uh, of a project uh, to produce uh, activity data for the land representation. Uh, that tool that they are doing uh, already produces a file that can, can be imported automatically in our, in our software. So we have another example of interoperability between a tool for uh, producing activity data for land representation, and our land representation uh, uh, manager that can read that out of the file, and so you have uh, all the land representation at once input. So this is a critical uh, tool. The problem is that it's still underdeveloped, and if we hope that FAO will uh, progress expeditiously, I don't know how you say, fastly, because it's very important. It's very important because Land representation is not banal at all. It requires a lot of time to be managed. Okay, let me jump on the, the last question from, uh, from Martial. Uh, mitigation tool, yes, we, we were hoping to present one here this session. Simply, it's uh, not exactly, <laughs> still need a bit of massaging. Uh, I cannot even give you the name because we, we work with an institution developing the tool and we don't agree on the name, so this also <laughs> will have to be changed. So, but, uh, Please join us at the COP and we will present the, the final tool. And the, the beauty of this is that we will have three tools working in sync. SAGE for data uh, uh, management and archiving, which facilitate the use of the IPCC software. And then this mitigation tool will take inputs from the IPCC software and, and will have uh, uh, actions uh, dedicated based on what uh, comes out of your time series. So, so the three tools will really set the basis for, for transparency for the European countries. And uh, there might be others developing uh, other tools, but uh, since we, for us, the center of the ETF for the European countries is the IPC software, so we try to make everything work together and in sync. 
So again, uh, ask for your patience and join us at the at the COP. <laughs> we should be able to to release the, this tool. Thank you. Any other question from somebody in the room? We still have five minutes, so please make use of them. <laughs> People online can only listen, not ask questions, otherwise it becomes too messy. <laughs> Please, gentlemen, off oh, in the back. Yeah, hello, colleagues. Um, I'm supporting a couple of countries with the follow-up to their quality assurance workshops. So if you are from Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Panama, um, Papua New Guinea, and you're here, I would like to have a chat with you because we're doing follow-up to the work which uh, they've made excellent presentations about. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Manful. <laughs> Anyone else? Please, we have three more minutes. Don't be shy. Okay, please. Or was it just a false alert? Yes, we have a lady in front, please. <laughs> Someone can bring your microphone? Sec Sedro. And this will be the final question, so please. <laughs> uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, I would like to... Uh, to uh, ask uh, a question, uh, but my English is not so uh, good. Uh, uh, using the IPCC uh, tool software, uh, the last version, we um, we were facing. Uh, we have uh, our group have faced a little uh, big problem. I don't know if uh, we don't know how to use it, uh, but uh, it's related to the category IPCC categories which is in the uh, uh, left uh, side uh, of the IPCC tool, and the uh, CRT uh, um, codes. Um, uh, the IPCC, uh, the categories are uh, subdivided, um, but for the uh, CRT, they are not in accordance. Accordance. They are not uh, accordance. Um, I can give... Uh, an example, uh, it is related uh, to uh, energy uh, for flaring. Um, in the uh, CRT, it is uh, 1B to CI. But uh, in the uh, IPCC category, uh, we don't find this. Uh, this can I just ask you your country, please? Uh, from Algeria. Oh, okay. We have the right expert in the room. <laughs> And, and by the way, the IPCC has, uh, has some tables permanently in the, in the entrance, so you, you can always uh, yeah. go, go and check uh, your problem with them. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, I would just say that, yeah, that was our life the past year, was doing this link between the IPCC category codes and the UNFCCC CRT. So there are some differences, but the mapping, if you look at the version that was released today, this morning, and look at the mapping, and you can see the IPCC software, put your data in there for that category, and see where it maps to the CRT. So that, that link is made kind of behind the scenes. And when uh, Sandra mentioned that eventually we hope to publish the, the tables that show exactly how the mapping works, you could see, you could see side by side where the comparison comparison is. But I would encourage you to look at the version released this morning. So, thank you. In the, in the IPCC inventory worksheets, the codes are the IPCC codes. And then those orange visualization tables, those are the UNFCCC CRT codes. There was blue text in the middle showing the mapping, <laughs> so you can see what IPCC category went to which CRT category. So we hope that it's very transparent, but yeah, please. Yeah, transparency is key. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much, and maybe some final words from Kyoto? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for your active participation in this event. 
uh, please uh, visit our website, TFI website, to uh, and get the, the latest version of the software and use it and give us your feedback. That's going to be very helpful to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kyoto. And have a good afternoon. Thank you. Yeah. Anyhow, we have a counter in the main hall. So we are there. If you have any questions, if you want to have some uh, detailed explanation, you may come. We are happy to, to give you.